I want to tell a little story about a guy named Gary Gygax. He's the man that invented dungeons. He's the man that invented dragons. Never before did geodesic shapes have numbers on them. Never before did the phrase to hit armor class zero exist. Elves, he probably invented them. Dwarves, let's not talk about that one. Dungeons and dragons. Dungeons and dragons. And dungeons and dragons 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 and dragons Okay, welcome back everybody. All right, in the call to in this hour we have uh, me, Shell Game, and uh, Lesbiathan, we're back. Uh, Turtle's still with us. Uh, joining us are Ganymede, Mix, the Heavenator, and now Dijon has swapped to the art chair. Ah, boy, this one is is gonna be something. This is a very old dumped duck uh, that from a um, man who uh originally provided by cheapskate i fleshed it out a little bit personally but um this is a blog kept by one a one alexis smolensk the proprietor of the Tao of D blog uh and uh he self-identifies as a gro uh he's like in his 50s and he's been posting this for he's been posting uh on this blog since this document was originally dumped back in 2010? Um, we love a document that grows with time. <laughs> what, it yeah, what, a, what a nice little time capsule this promises to be. Yeah, uh, but before I, uh, before I get us started, um, I am going to introduce another uh, big incentive here. Uh, Ganymede, who's here right now, uh, has offered a special reading of a story, I believe. Would you like to explain that? Yeah, this is, of course, uh, The Demi Mermaid Witch and the Strawberry Fairy by oh. Xavier Remington, a name that will be familiar to fans of another podcast, which I will not mention so as not to plug during Garbage Day. Uh, this person is the... Site owner of mysticinvestigations.com, which is where you can go to learn about the anti claws, the uh, Halloween witch who controls the spirit of Halloween, or is the spirit of Halloween, it's really unclear, uh, and all sorts of other paranormal trivia. Uh, but what you, what you cannot read there is this person's book, which is available on Amazon, uh, and which I will happily read to all of you for the low price of $100. Uh, I guess at this point, I will also point out I have an incentive. Well, I'm doing the tarot card thing just like last year. If you want me to draw you a custom tarot card, I'll do it. I'm going to put that up there. I'm not going to pitch it very hard. Uh, just want to piggyback that there. Really, though, Ganny finds some wild stories, just some wild like books and just trash. <laughs> I can't take credit for this one. That, of course, goes to the podcast that I, again, cannot mention the name of. <laughs> uh well okay so those things are up now and but what's uh, what's also up is the lesbiathan yeah. uh next reading sonnet number two great awesome uh it's true that my first love was atari before the birth of classic nes my parents did not find this alarming that i should be educated like this great the SNES became the new thing on which I was to spend every day until, what ho, oh, did the Tooth Fairy bring? So many games for my Game Boy to play. <sighs> it's been a long time since those carefree days when console gaming first captured my heart and I neglected each of the sun's rays for the original Mario Kart. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
I have every midi stuck in my mind. I'll cherish them all till the end of time. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, if we manage to get up uh, oh. a total of $200 this oh. hour, by the whole hour, um, we, we will get sonnet number three, the conclusion to the geek sonnets that Julia will have to read. But Surely impossible. So. But but so but now let's go ahead and get to the document. Uh, hey, Mix. Boy, I, I wonder why I'm the very first one here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, will you please read this post from the uh, the Dow of D and D blog? Um, Sex and D and D, the steamy edition. I, I sure will. <laughs> it's uh, a long one. Halfway through. The season. Yeah! Halfway through, Heave is going to pick uh, where you leave off. Okay. Sex in D&D, the steamy edition. Discounting an earlier post I wrote on this subject, there really is no reason why sex cannot be part of a player character's agenda, despite a general feeling that no one would ever want to take part in sex and gaming unless one were, as Roger the GS puts it, goofy horn dogs. Despite, as he also says, the lack of mechanical means. Please stop. This continues to astound me, really, but then matters of sex always do. For such a universal recreation, for something that undeniably offers the best feeling, however brief, that any human has a chance of obtaining for free, and for something that yields the most rewarding experience and purpose that can conceivably uh, be available, the insertion of life into one's family and care, this culture just baffles the living fuck out of me. Hmm. I'll throw uh, there. Uh, but then I grew up in the 70s. <laughs> Nobody in the... These had sex, apparently. Uh, <laughs> no one in the 70s thought that any of this moral crap was going to hold out much longer. Stonewall had happened. Public nudity had broken. Oh, great. I just read ahead. Uh, public nudity had broken the barrier. The powers that be were unable to hold back not only the spread of porn, but the spread of all kinds of porn. <laughs> the religious right had failed in their effort to God. stem the tide of swearing and sex in film, or to keep people from making fun of religion. See Life of Brian. That's your citation. Okay. And on the whole, generally, the majority was waking up to the fact that sex could be talked about, it could be admitted openly as something a person liked. And all those people who whined about it were were clearly impotent and constipated. (sighs) Then the moral majority coalesced and went to war against the free press and media by targeting advertisers and money. AIDS happened, and the public was deluged with misinformation that expressly misrepresented homosexuals and terrified heteros in their beds. I love that we're invoking this in a D&D post. Governments, and especially the feminist right, cracked down on kink with laws and invented morality ah, intended, ah, to make, ah. uh, invented to make everything sound like rape. And polit- political correctness was invented. So here we are. People Where still is like this guy on the political spectrum. What the fuck? <laughs> Everywhere. He, he's Everywhere. on the, the the unknown fifth axis. He he just said here we are, which implies you should know. <laughs> Uh, people still like sex. The porn is still everywhere. Homosexuality hasn't been crushed. Television and movies are full of nudity and kink. All the morality proscription failed in the extreme. Rule <laughs> 34 reigns supreme. <laughs> four guys sitting around a table playing D&D can't deal with one of them saying he'd like to have sex with an elven princess without being labeled a goofy horn dog. That's what I would label them. Just to be clear. Oh, yeah, is is that the damaging mind. label that you're responding to? <laughs> Uh, yes. I don't I don't know if it's because boys who play in D&D are so socially inept with women that homosexuality is a constant terrifying possibility, being that they cannot get within touching range of anything but boys, or if it is because D&D boys are so noticeably desperate that speaking out loud of the opposite sex brings derision and hatred because, well, we do not speak of them here. I've certainly mm-hmm. been in some games where boys describing sex with women was a wild free-for-all. Hmm... Going back to our high school days, where those things were funny as hell. <laughs> Great. I have an authority that there are some profoundly unpleasant moments at some tables for girls. Where the sex jokes are constant, blatant, and abusive. And so maybe that's the goofy horn dogginess that occurs at yeah. Roger's table. Not Who's Roger? The term I would Roger? use. Who? Who's Roger? Who the fuck? Is Roger? He's a guy who posts sometimes on I this. Hate this guy. Uh, that kind of horn dogginess would get you punched in the face at mine. Probably not by me. Figured. I'm all the way on the other side of the table. There are some boyfriends and women who would be a lot closer to you who'd reach you first. 
Uh, ha- halfway there, Julia. Uh, oh, wait, sex, is- <laughs> sex is a part of the human experience. It's a huge part of drama, of purpose, of what makes us go. We identify in large part with the need for and the result of. Oh. No. <laughs> no. Great. This is why there's a lot more sex on the internet than there is D&D. I disagree. You're kidding me. But it makes a player feel uncomfortable. Yeah. That is the whole argument against we were playing the Ugh. game the other day and we had gotten into town after a hard battle. The DM said there were some prostitutes by the front gate just to make us understand what kind of town it was. Go, go into detail. What kind of town was it? What are, what are you talking here? What kind of town oh was it? And Jeremy, he's new, asked how much they cost. We laughed, but he was serious. Oh my God. So the DM told him and Jeremy said he paid the money and they did it in back of the guardhouse. Jeez, it just made me sick. What a fucking horn dog. And yeah. Mm, yes. It's not actually difficult to get into a discussion these days about sex. They happen at work. They happen spontaneously at the bar. They just sort of crop up here and there. Like whack a mole. Hell, I've had conversation about sex with my parents after Why? I got to be. 40, they just loosened uh, up. Wow. No idea why. No. <laughs> so they, they didn't loosen up, they gave up. We made it. Um, no. <laughs> of course, and that's the whole internet. And what's funny is that there were these vast open landscapes of people talking openly about sex and the sex they'd like to have. And when they'd like to have it or when they did have it and none of them are are snorting in comical shock when somebody says boob or pussy like a bunch of cheesy grade sixers. Oh no, are they nerds? Oh, they are. Oh shit. Old and we all guys. know where the, these chat rooms are, and we know people who go there when uh. they'd like to stop being alone and maybe meet someone of like mind. Uh. I met my present partner of 12 years for one back oh in 2001. Jesus fucking Christ. The uncomfortable argument is a powerful one. It transcends the table. It reaches out to the whole D and D internet, where Roger and many others sneer Roger? in disgust. <laughs> Roger is a guy who posts a comment. Yeah, yeah, awesome. and uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah, this guy does actually receive a lot of engagement, and people will share stories from there. Uh, from their tables as well. Sneer in disgust at the idea of a player choosing to step into the shoes of a human being. Whoa. Yes, by all means, hack things to death. Yes, gloat over gold. Please, here, the doors is wide open for any mind-fucking game playing you'd like to do with other players or the DM. Yes, welcome to a land of megalomaniacs, narcissists, gluttons, and the pompous, but we don't do that other thing. I really un- not understand that some people feel very uncomfortable being privy to you role-playing, having a sexual encounter. Is he really that dense, or is... Yes, but he doesn't, and his needs okay. are more important. Great. Awesome. Cool. Fucking sick. Awesome. Great. Fuck mm. this guy. The moody, dangerous pirate captain heads down to the beach, bottle of ouzo in hand, mourning the loss of her dead husband, whom the party briefly knew and whom they buried. The player character watches her, well aware of how violent she can be, how deep her feelings, and though she's been described... By a male DM, the description is compelling, just like every description of a strong female character mm-hmm. in a book or story written by a man has been <laughs> since the dawn of oh, time. Oh, so, um, oh, all none of them got it. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
have this big briefcase bulging with contradicting evidence. And listen, the Brent pirate captain breasted boobily down the beach in mourning <laughs> of her husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I have to say. Thank you, Dijon, for what you're drawing. <laughs> <clears throat> and the player would like to do something. He's interested in where events might go somehow if this NPC were, in were induced to be more than just a momentary distraction, but an ally, too. How to approach her... She seems to disdain everyone and everything, but clearly she is filled with passion what to do. Like any fighter girding, sorry, girdling on a sword and stepping up to a lion, daring to face the thing in its lair, he marches forward without any weapons at all. He knows she probably carries a dagger. He knows she's murdered men before. But he wants to believe there's more than that. He tells the DM. He seats her by the arm. He turns her around. He's a fighter. He's 50 pounds more than her. And the DM rolls a die. Yeah. They tell her to stop being stupid. The no, player tells no, the DM, no, 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 I tell her she cannot mourn his death forever. She's destroying herself with liquor and his endless sorrow. I shout at her, tell her to be alive now, to recognize that her dead husband would not want her to stay like this. She fights you, says the DM, and the player realizes that her hand might in that moment reach for a dagger she has hidden. I hold on tight. The DM pronounces that the player is successful. The woman doesn't speak. <laughs> oh, player, weird. Anything else. So well written. The player... Yeah, definitely can't tell it's a guy. Good God. The player, daring, says, I tell her her husband left her. The DM rolls a die, says the woman breaks free and punches the fighter. He takes a point of damage. <laughs> Damn you, the woman says. The fighter doesn't give in. He gave you all that he had, and now he has left you. He's left you here alone, and you know there's nothing else he can give you. A roar. The DM says as the woman stands her ground, furious trying with all her strength to hold herself together, but clearly she's too overwhelmed to speak. Wow, that was a hell of a dice roll. Too overwhelmed by this random jack-off? Yeah, the fighter the says, I speak to her very gently. I tell her she's not alone. I tell her there are others here who won't leave, who will fight with you, win with you, and die with you. If you open your eyes. Uh, she laughs in your face. She's really looks, out and she leaves. She looks up a fighter. The DM announces that she is overwhelmed. He says that the woman lifts a hand half-heartedly towards the fighter. Because he confused her so much. The fighter responds. I seize the hand. I use oh. it to pull her tight against me. If she makes no protest, I kiss her hard. That, that I make her before. understand uh. I've meant every word. Hey, that doesn't naturally follow up to any of the words you were just saying. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, the DM the DM clears things up. Somebody else at the yeah. table's like, I'm gonna get a soda, I think. Yeah, like, what, the <laughs> what the fuck? The DM says she doesn't fight. She gives in. She yields. What a strong character. <laughs> The fighter oh, says, female protagonist. Oh god, I don't know. What do I press her down to the sand? Very careful not to push too hard, not to hurry. I want her to understand that this is not sex, this is me caring for her. <laughs> I, I want her to understand that I'm willing to be there for her. Barf. And the DM judges a moment, we chooses 2d6. Why are they rolling for it? For damage. <laughs> <laughs> Decides whether it's a seven or more that she returns for feeling. If it's a six or less, 
She's merely weakened. Just flip a fucking coin. What? What are you doing? Thinking about her no, husband. That's not this, how this. This is a power by the apocalypse system. system, apparently. What the fuck? God. The DM rolls a nine. She understands. The DM says. Wow. You, you, you don't have to have everything decided by roll. You just say no. no. No, I use no, bardic you do. inspiration to give you advantage, so you have sex good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy! So, um, oh my god, I, I, that that was that was quite the lead in, just to, for wow. us to reach a point where you know a fighter like yanks a lady around. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm yeah. sure that he has enlightening things to say about other things, though Ganymede. <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah. Now that now that your uh, creative juices are flow, uh, I'm going to abandon this joke. This is creativity and breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> three months ago, Trollsmith li- linked to a Newsweek article about creativity called "The Creativity Crisis," an article oh, pitching the argument that creativity is an inherent quality and that it is something society is in danger of losing. Having established, through typical journalistic bias, from one source the existence of a creative score for individuals, the article naturally sells the fear that creative scores are declining, rushing to blame TV and video games with the lack of creativity development yes. in schools as the third culprit. You know, the lack of, yeah. Uh, the article at one point bemoans all around us are matters of national and international importance that are crying out for creative solutions. Then claiming that it takes a healthy marketplace to allow a populace to either be receptive to ideas or contribute. Yeah, sounds like a Newsweek article. The whole article is written in typical what? Newsweek style, and I, can't, I know you can't <laughs> wait to learn what that means. Punching forward the political agendas that the oh magazine has become famous for, and yeah. making sure that you keep reading in case some terrible calamity might result when oh, people man. no you're longer st- have ideas. You're so much smarter than the sheeple. Yes, it's a big steaming pile of hooey, of course, but tr- oh, that's Troll's Myth. Only wants to pull out the small bit about creativity being learnable, and I can't fault him for the paragraph he chose. Putting it more succinctly, my first wife went to high school... Oh, this sounds like it's going to be very succinct. (laughs) My first wife went to high school with a very tall fellow who didn't play basketball, saying he didn't know how, and the coach told him, we can teach you how to play basketball, we can't teach you how to be tall. Uh, There are obviously millions of ideas in the world, brilliant and otherwise, that won't be advanced in our lifetimes because they step on someone's toes or are simply too difficult for a tight-fisted public to implement. Ideas only have value if they can be sold. That's the guts of our world. Reception of an idea in this culture, the one that pays Newsweek's bills, is the willingness of your average stranger to open up his or her wallet and give you 20 bucks. Uh, Now would be a great time to donate (laughs) exactly 20 (laughs) bucks. Uh, But seriously, fuck all that. There's an enormous amount of...
Oh, sweet. Are we back? Right. Uh, he's we on back? His, yeah, he's going to fix it. Okay. Yeah, probably... Oh, he's back. Hello, Albert. Oh, we're, yeah, back. we're back. Yes. You fucking piece of shit. Thank you, Boots Rain Gear, for fixing our thing. Yeah. Never, okay. Never All right. Leave um, us again. Uh, it looks like we dropped. Uh, someone actually said. We're... Uh. Got one last paragraph before I started. Oh, that's what it was. That oh, uh, yeah. oh boy, Ganymede. Yes. Oh, uh, but seriously, fuck all that. There's an enormous amount of creativity that goes on continuously without money changing hands that doesn't have much to do with the marketplace and is therefore of no interest to Newsweek. It interests me, however, and I'd like to tackle the question that Trollsmith quotes. That question being, is creativity learnable? I'd like to advance an unqualified yes. But that's not going to do many of you a lot of good. Because, you see, it isn't easily learnable. Many of you are creatively working on worlds and developing adventures. And so you've learned that creation is hard. Oh my God. Particularly extended creation. Oh, I just noticed. This, this is a double space, a period double spacer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, poster after my own heart. <laughs> As the progress of your world increases, the number of variables and tasks that suggest themselves starts to seem like an insurmountable list, leading to a great number who quit. Those who quit simmer unhappily for months in their creative juices until yeah. they launch themselves into a new world, a new idea, a new game, hoping that this time... The process will prove something within their scope of achievement. We are back, apparently. Yeah, we're back. I know something about creativity. I'm going to take advantage of the evidence this blog provides to try to take a few points here about how you become more creative and how you get to be better at it. And since I'm a contagious oh old God. bugger, I'm not going to be nice about it. Here's what you do. Get your mouth off the tit. <laughs> what? I'm sorry? Cool. If you've been playing this game more than two to three years as a DM, and you are still buying modules and considering playing a new gaming system that's just come out, you have a dependency problem. Oh, yeah, I hate very might be a DM. Oh, boy. I think that 20 years ago, it was worthwhile looking into, looking into new things, since a lot of the stuff that was being created in advance in the world of RPG was actually new. Yes, yeah, so back in 1990. <laughs> Everybody else should have gotten tired the same time as me. But there is an enormous amount of written material that has been piled up already. And you should have plenty of time to peruse the lion's share of it in the space of three years. Assuming you're serious about the craft. If you're not, what the fuck are you reading me for? And this goes on forever, and we're stopping there. Jesus, uh, yeah. Two more pages at least. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but no. <laughs> uh, before we move on to the next thing, though, I do want to. I did want to take this time to uh, show off a little something from uh, Dijon du Jour. It's another incentive. It is one of many delights. Uh, let's see. I just gotta find it here. Excuse me. Uh, sorry, Dijon. I am having the uh, incentive you wanted me to pitch this uh, this uh, time around. We'll fix that. We'll fix that after. I'm I'm going to go ahead and.
your lovely shadow box. All right, and that should pop up in just a second. If I have to turn everything else off, I will. Oh, boy. Uh... Okay. We agree that this doc was dumped because this guy makes some really good points that we all agree on. <laughs> exactly. Is all that right. what I'm getting? Because I see what Shell is maybe going to have me read, and I don't. Oh, want Jesus. Oh, no. Yeah, no <laughs> I don't uh, see uh, that, too. I, yeah. See, actually, the part that we just got through is where the document. That's why the document was dumped. Oh, boy. Uh, I, though, noticed that this man had continued to write forever. Oh. There it is, oh. the cursed god, the cursed god shadow box, one hundred and twenty dollars, and it can be yours. This is an amazing little piece of paper craft. I am it looks so fucking sick. It looks so yeah, great. It's really, amazing. Really cool. I've I've seen it in real life, and as cool as you think it looks in the image, it looks even cooler. It is fantastic. And while you all, uh, you all should try to find out how to donate to get that right now. Because Biathan's going to read something you don't want to listen to. Go for it, Julia. All right. This is called... Fuck you, Shell. It's called A Slave Trader and Auctioneer. I was supposed to write something on learning to design D&D today, but, well, what the hell? I'm not in the mood. Great. Awesome. Instead, I want to show and tell something I finished last night, the result of work I did over the weekend. Up until August 2011, I was regularly working on a series of equipment lists which I posted on the blog, awesome, great, and which can be located here. Um, it had something, it had gotten up to the S's with Sculptor, and then I ran, I run out of steam intending to get back to it. I did not until August 2012, when I put up one table, that of Shipwright, and then I realized I w should really rebuild the availables list on my prices table. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> wow, hero. Wild guy. So engrossing. creative. <laughs> I started to do so, and then I crashed. I haven't looked at it seriously in more than a year. Ah, oh, well, can't rush these things. To be honest, it was the same problem I, as the hear noise thing I mentioned in the last post. Yeah, yeah he has an entire chart for if you're hearing various noise, noises and how okay. you have to hear them. No real solution oh to present God. itself. And why work if... And why work if it's not going to work? What the fuck? I, I'm struggling. Skip through. Well, skip, just go, yeah. skip, skip through Where, this. Uh, what did you end up actually? Well, okay. Uh, I'm going to read right here because this is the most offensive thing. So let's talk about slavery. Yeah, let's talk oh, no. about slavery. Yeah, great. I'm guessing that a lot of DMs and players will be greatly offended by the presence of this uh, of this table and the availability of items on this table, and argue with me that they should not be included in DM. In, sorry, d and I'm a bit amused uh, by this. It's like the total German sure. band on the swats, swastika, which is represented as, uh, which is presented as, though the image itself has the magical power to spontaneously create a fourth Reich, if it is not gamefully suppressed. That's not Yeah, this is, this is really aged it. well. Host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure has. <sighs> Arguably, it's a tourist thing. Jesus Christ. The Germans not anxiously wishing to be identified with the period 70, 70 years ago, but there's still an odd sort of paranoia involved there. <clears throat> People tend to treat slavery the same <laughs> Jesus Christ. Treat slavery the same way, as if to say if we deny its existence, or at least speak of it only in terms of how bad it is and how wrong it was, and why it should never have happened. Correct, correct. Uh, this will match. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, handsome brothers. <laughs> All right, this will magically remove its effect upon society, and somehow we will grow to be brothers. This mindset totally ignores that there are literally millions of slaves in the world right now. I don't. <laughs> I don't click on. The... I don't want to click on that link. Yeah, yeah. that's frightening. Uh, who receive little no attention at all, digging up the previous minerals that construct your cell phone. Oh. Or, sorry, precious minerals that construct Ted your talk. Uh, cell phone. Great. 
uh, or tablet or enable the wedding ring to give to your spouse, put diamond and gold together as a culture we chose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip because... on down to this next paragraph. Oh, uh, moral outrage works like a convenience store? <laughs> uh, so yes, the year is 1650 and slavery exists just as it does now. Surfer exchange for debts. Prisoners are worked to the death in mines and upon plantations. Slaves are raised from birth to do both and to provide entertainment, to offer sex, and slave cat houses. Gross. Uh, built for the purpose, people who gather to pay their debt are given over to masters for six year six year periods. Deportees are gathered for religious Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, that's great. Next paragraph. <laughs> Would I allow a player in my world to oh own slaves, to punish slaves, to kill slaves, if that player is so desired? Yes. Why? Well, because we're not talking about real people. Oh, okay. D&D &D is a fiction, and I, having so much imagination, cannot imagine a world without slavery. Um, it isn't real. For those people who believe somehow that speaking of it in game, in game somehow makes it real. I'm sorry, I cannot buy into that delusion, and it is a delusion. The idea uh, that this happens, that watching guns fire on television sh television creates a gun culture, that rock music causes suicide, or the internet porn creates rape, or any of these other ridiculous associations drummed up together is... <laughs> chat, was one, chat was guessing right. political affiliation libertarian. I think you're right. Yeah, just maybe. Just oh, yeah. maybe. <laughs> I, I really love the cell phone of like, well, it's fiction and it can be about anything and I made mine about this. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's, well... It, it's, it's a problem. It's real cool when you talk about fiction and then you cite historical precedent. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's cool fiction, buddy. Cool. A belief that, like religion, feeds upon fear. Great, awesome, you are so cool. I don't accept it. I do believe that fear and the mi mi bleh, 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 manipulation of fear by censorship or contrived morale superiority is the engine that actually produces the crime. Uh -huh. Your biggest crime here is you, buddy. Jesus Christ. It is not the discussion of the crime, but it's refusal to discuss the crime that produces evil. I am very smart. Discussion nope, this is all because he reached the point where he, where slave trader needed a table. And this is why we shouldn't tear down Confederate statues. Okay, here's the most insane thing. Discussion ended slavery. I don't know. In America, there was a little thing called the American Civil War. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Can't wait to as learn we all about know, that. during the Civil War, they had uh -oh. several rigorous debates. All right, Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom Cabin. Yeah, that, that happens. That happens. Uh, time, blah blah blah. This is not but what I, I know, thought the D and D document would yeah, be about. <laughs> yeah, this is dire. Is there anything else you need me to read in the shell? No, 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 no. I think that's good. I think that's good. I am afraid I'm going to have to. Let... I'm about to like just scald you all with an even more hot take. Something that's just gonna fucking Christ. just fucking like burn you up to the core <clears throat> clothing insulation the insulation of clothes are often measured at the unit clo i have a nice little table here that shows a whole bunch of different clothes and how they and by what and by what at what rate they insulate where one corresponds to the insulating value of the clothing that is needed to maintain a person in comfort Sitting oh at rest God. in a room that is 21 degrees Celsius. There are other considerations, but these can be ignored for God. game purposes. W really? Wow. Weird. Can, oh we can, can we ignore all of it for game purposes? Can no. We start there? No. My general concern is oh that players are God. able to determine the appropriate amount of clothing that their character should be wearing for each temperature grade. Holy that is a link. Shit. And that they are able to easily calculate what their CLO would be if they wore this or that. Here is the table on the left uh, as a, a downloaded Excel file, which allows the character to write yes to each piece of clothing they are wearing to have their total CLO calculated. Isn't that convenient? No, shut the fuck up. Comfort, quote unquote, for game purposes is defined as the character operating at all ability scores at full. As discomfort oh increases, God. however, ability scores fall. As the character becomes less oh able God. to strain, reason, endure, react, or maintain a peaceful disposition, all because of their fucking clothes. 
It is desirable that players should consider the weather before launching themselves upon an adventure, taking into consideration things like their lower ability stats, the amount of armor they can reasonable expect to wear, and the amount of time that they can engage in combat before suffering serious fatigue. I mean, you're just too hot in that outfit. You can't fight. God. Uh, if anybody was wondering, I used the table, and uh, I, Ganymede, the human woman sitting alone in my house, have a clothing score of 0. 0.55. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Thanks, four. Um, <clears throat> this table gives a general sense of this possible. Blah, blah, blah. For example, Albert is wearing clothing sufficient to give him a CLO of 0. 0.8. He is residing where the temperature is warm, and he is taking no action. He is therefore comfortable, as any God. CLO between 0.5 and 1 is sufficient to be comfortable. Oof, However, I just, I just barely qualify. I made it under the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> However, Albert decides to go to the market as he is moving about buying things. Oh His 0 0.8 CLO is now above the 0. 0.5 maximum that is necessary for him to be comfortable. As a result, all his ability stats count as one point lower. Because he I went to the I market. No I'm shopping. I, I think even some of the worst perspectives in politics in the, in the world would leave at this point. Like, nobody's sticking around for this shit. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Yeah, I've been running this game for 20 years. We have proof. Yeah, shopping makes you dumber. Years. <laughs> oh my god I they haven't completed one quest in 20 years <laughs> no because their clothing score is too high <laughs> Albert sits down to rest but the sun shines harder <laughs> and it becomes balmy he is not oh comfortable because now the maximum of CLO he can wear is 5 so that even sitting he is reduced to <laughs> what oh Well, that's rude. Not. Good God. <sighs> However, he fights all back. Those roles he fights DMs, back like... against his CLO and oh, removes no. his doublet with sleeves, reducing his CLO to 0.5. He's bare skinned from the waist up, but he's comfortable. His stats revert to normal. So the what's, comes... what's Albert's to walk against CLO score? <laughs> <laughs> the evening comes and the temperature is down to fortunately Albert he can't find his doublet and now he needs to be wearing a CLO of at least point of I wonder why this guy can't get women to sit at his table to be comfortable whereas before he was too warm now he is too cold once again his ability stat drops by one point will he ever be room temperature join us next week <laughs> <laughs> You know, when your DM pulls out a fucking Texas Instruments calculator, that's a sign you need to, like, get up and leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I am never going to make fun of a use rope skill in 3.0 again. It, <laughs> it could have been so much worse. Yeah. This, yeah. this, I'm not kidding. This man has hundreds of blog posts each year it's, for the last 12 years. This is somehow worse than the grappling rules from 3. whatever. Like, Jesus. <laughs> Holy I love the rapid rules. They're terrible. Yeah. Uh, you have a flow see. chart. <laughs> if you get tangled up in your clothes, you can interact with the CLO system and the grapple at the same time. I would, the rush is incredible. I would <laughs> simply shoot myself. You don't have enough CMB to get out of your clothing. Uh, let's see here. Who can read the fastest? No one. No one can read these the fastest. Well, you can read fast. Oh boy, fast. what am I reading? Uh, if you'll scroll down to no, you're a rookie. Get it? And let's see how far you get. Oh, good. Challenge mode enabled. No, you're a rookie. Get it? This past few days has brought to my attention something about character creation that I'd long forgotten, the interminable backstory. The effusive, complex description of how the character's life has gone up to the moment they begin to play in the campaign. Rich with murders, the revenge plots, lifelong enemies, the many twists and turnings, and ever the angst delivered with pounding hammer of a character driven of the distant land of their birth and forced to contend with exile in a hostile foreign country. Can I just say something here? These characters are supposed to be first level. Oh, shut I up. I hate plot hooks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when the characters try to interact with my story. Yeah. Well, listen, 
and there is no Fuck denying baby. the cognitive dissonance going on here with would-be players who insist of relating their prospective characters to their heroes in the movies or in books. The D character who starts the campaign does not come into the frame in the middle of the story, but at the beginning. The character is not Bilbo at his 100th birthday party with deep, stark secrets and a knowledge of the world. The character is Bilbo when the road is nothing more than a place where others come from, not a place where he has gone. The whole point is that the characters are at the start. There is no backstory. At I'm best, no they might uh. have <laughs> things they picked up along the way, an error or two they've made, a mistake, a skill they've picked up, or a few friends they've got. But nothing earth-shaking. Nothing where the world has pivoted upon their existence. This character has no experience. That should give a hint or two. If the character has traveled some, or hit a bad course, or made a good show for the community, it stands to reason from the from the total lack of experience. Your character has no call to adventure. Fuck you. Listen, listen. Fuck. There are two truths to Ricky characters. One, this character has never killed any. Two, this character has never seized any wolf. Uh, Forget about the like rich lord background. I guess whatever. what damage the character may have suffered was necessary to bring them along to leveled status. What coin or wealth the character has accumulated is coin that has been given to the character. Earned in wages, perhaps, but I don't give experience for wages. Oh the point my is, God. the coin hasn't been obtained through any sort of adventure. So how well, can My there... players want their characters to have some kind of agency. Uh, that's my it... job. <laughs> uh, I, they seem to have forgotten their CLO. This, this is what oh. fucking AD&D does to you. It fucking wakes you. Hang on. He answers my question right here. It is very rare, but it is possible for a character... To, very rare, but someone in my world can be of noble birth. Uh, does this make the character a somebody? No. He or she still sits at the bottom of the pecking order, even if the character's parents have died and the character sits upon the throne of the kingdom. It's presumed the last parent has just died. This character Why? knows nothing and has not worked out his or her place in the courtly power struggle. Why? And may in fact be murdered at any moment by a usurper. The player may have a wildly oh, different environment to run for, but the rules are the same. The character oh, must establish their God. reputation. He or she is not, doesn't get given one by... No, they okay. literally do. Why? That's literally D&D. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That was a very awful effort mix, but unfortunately this man types too much always uh i do like that they go on to say there's a character named pistol in D. &D. all right well that was a lovely lovely time a roller coaster if you will uh i'm going to thank uh i'm going to thank tom for joining us right now thanks uh, very much uh you'll be swapping back out with stress i will be goodbye yeah, and uh, and to everybody else, uh, you're all you're all staying on. So I'll see you then. We'll all see you then. Uh, all right for the last Bye -bye. hour of extra credit block video game poetry.